Westminster Shorter Catechism, question and answer 34. What is adoption? Adoption is an act of God's free grace, whereby we are received into the number and have a right to all the privileges of the sons of God. We might say that adoption is a benefit that is quite similar to the benefit of justification in this sense, that like our justification, our adoption, we say, is a forensic benefit. What does that mean, a forensic benefit? That's a fancy way for saying a legal benefit, a benefit that is ours at the hands and at the behest of a judge. Just as in our justification, the judge of all the earth, even God, declares us, judges us to be righteous. Again, not because of our own righteousness, but only because of Jesus' righteousness, which clothes us as we receive him by faith alone. So likewise with adoption, God declares as judge of all the earth that though at one time we were not children of God, now we are called children of the living God, to use the language from the prophet Hosea. And here we find in the scriptures this, this teaching very clearly articulated. First of all, I want to make clear that adoption, no less than our justification, is an act of God's free grace. In other words, it is by grace alone. It is by, by, by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, that we receive this benefit of adoption. We are adopted in the Son, even the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Him, as the eternal and everlasting Son of God made human flesh, we find as well our, our citizenship in His kingdom and also our inheritance in the family of God. And so the Catechism goes on and describes this adoption, this benefit of adoption, as being received into the number, into the number of the children of God, counted among all of his children who have been received into his kingdom, into his family as well, by his grace. And we have all the rights, therefore, and privileges of children of God. There are certain rights and privileges that we have in our homes if we are children living in a home. Our children have certain benefits and privileges within the home. And so likewise, we, who are citizens of the kingdom and family members of the family of God, have rights and privileges. And I want to read to you one of the passages that teaches this so very clearly. In John chapter 1, verse 12, it says this wonderful truth. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And so as John here teaches us very clearly for all those who, who come to faith in Jesus Christ, we are counted as sons of the living God, children of God members of his family. And that wasn't always the case. Because of our sin, we have left the family of God. We have forsaken God. We have said no to God as our heavenly father. But in Jesus Christ, by God's grace, he accepts us, welcomes us, and brings us into the family that he has established by his grace. I also want to read to you another verse that teaches this so very clearly and powerfully, namely Romans chapter 8, verse 17, where it says this, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. These are the privileges of being children of God, that we are heirs of God, joint heirs of with Christ, in order that we might inherit a kingdom. And as it says in the book of Hebrews, not a, not a kingdom that can be shaken, not a kingdom that, is, that, that, that can fall, that can be sacked, but a kingdom that is unshakable. We are those who inherit that kingdom. We are those, as we are told elsewhere in Scripture, who will inherit the city of the living God as its citizens. 
being his children. And so we look forward to that day, do we not, when all of that inheritance, although we have it now by faith, we will someday behold it by sight. But until then, we are called to be faithful children, children of the living God who seek to walk for the glory of our Heavenly Father. And we do it now, and we look forward to having that in all of eternity. In our next lesson, we'll turn to the the next benefit of being united to Christ, namely the benefit of sanctification.